You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. Welcome to Live and Lead for Impact. I'm Kirsten Ross, your host, and this is episode number 157. Thank you so much for joining us. I have a great guest today. His name is Lyle Tard. He's a 19-year military veteran who's been fighting to discover significance his entire life. In 2018, he founded Impact Servant Leadership because he realized that true success in life is gained through unlocking the significance in others through servant leadership principles, teaching that leaders lead best when they serve. Thank you so much for joining me, Lyle. It's my honor to serve. Thanks for so much for having me on, Kirsten. Yes. Well, it's my pleasure. And I look forward to uh, hearing the story of um, what has motivated you to make this impact. And I love the concept of servant leadership. Um, yeah, ultimately, uh, it's it's a leader's job to, to get people going and motivated, right? I tell you what, it's something that people don't necessarily think about. A, think it's just automatic, or B, we've just seen leadership model in so many other ways other than service that it's something that's not necessarily appreciated at the level that it should be. I personally think that servant leadership is one of the hardest, if not the hardest leadership style there is, because you have to be completely selfless. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that there is such thing as being completely selfless. And so going on that journey has been very impactful, sorry, you know, pun intended <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it comes to leading others. So yeah, it's been an exciting journey for us so far. Great. Well, tell me what life experiences have motivated you to, to start on this journey. Well, Kirsten, I don't know if you or any of our listeners have ever felt like they were mediocre. I think that a lot of people are in the fight to be normal and when you're told as a kid that you can be anything that you want, you can reach for the stars, you can grab the brass ring, whatever a brass ring means to you in your life context, and you go through life, but then all the other voices and people around you kind of tell you, hey, just kind of stick with the status quo, kind of do what everybody else does and you'll be okay. Those dreams and aspirations you have as a young kid start to fade away. And then you get into spaces where life starts to be dictated to you. And so as a military kid, my entire life was dictated to me from my father as a 20 year military veteran, 21 years, I think I actually just talked to me. I said, I think it's 21 years in the military. And then of course me draw, of course me joining the military myself, everything around me from an authority perspective has been telling me who I am, what I want, need to do, what I should do, what I should eat, what I should like, and who I should be. But when you have small kids and the things that you got told as a small kid starts to come back to the surface and you start to tell your little one, two, three-year-old, who am I supposed to be? Mm -hmm. And then you start to tell them, hey, you can be anything that you want. And then that three-year-old jabs you by saying, hey, daddy, are you doing everything that you wanted to do? And it's like, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, uh, I'm doing what people told me I should do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so how can I have the confidence to tell my daughter and my son that you can be anything that you want, that you can be exactly who you're supposed to be in life when I'm not doing the exact, the exact same exact thing. Now, serving my country in the United States Air Force has been one of the most rewarding, one of the most admirable things a person can do. And for anyone listening to this particular episode, whatever you're doing in life right now, you can have significant impact in the space that you're in. However, you're born to do something significant. What is that thing? And I realized that even though I was serving my country, less than 1% of the population does what I have the opportunity and the honor to do. 
it still isn't what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And so as I got in this moment where uh, I was just kind of helping out a bunch of college students, I had someone approach me and say, hey, would you talk to these students about serving leadership? And I said, what? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. And then when uh, the students grilled me for 45 minutes on my life, and, and from the perspective of serving leadership, I realized this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. I'm supposed to be giving all of me so that all of them can be the best that they need to be to find that significant point, place and mark in their life that is going to expand them, grow them to be the best potentially person that they could possibly be in their own life. And so uh, that's those are the moments. Um, it, it just came to fruition in 2018 when we actually fun, founded the company. But this journey started in about 2014, 2015 for us, uh, really for me, because my wife refuses to actually <laughs> <laughs> be a part of the actual company. But I love that you keep saying us, 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 right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and it's team. been an us thing that. because they've yeah. all been a massive part of of who I am and in, in, in the journey that I'm on. They're so supportive. Uh, I wish you could see my office. My wife built the office from scratch, from really nothing. And, but but as far as the actual business is concerned, she's like, no, no, I don't, no, I don't want anything to do with the business <laughs> part. But uh, the whole journey, yes, um, they they've been a large part of. So, now that we've talked about how you found this impact that you wanted to make in the world, which is helping others make their impact and be the their best selves, um. How are you working to make this impact? What services are you providing? What activities are you engaged in? What are you doing? Thank you so much for the opportunity to answer that question, Kirsten. And I, I think it's a special thing. I had a conversation with a bunch of different people, but there's one particular person that really became a catalyst for what I'm currently doing as far as making an impact. It was a dream at once. Uh, but I talked to a guy by the name of Dan Rockwell. Now, Dan Rockwell has a blog called Leadership Freak. And if you look up Dan Rockwell, he is one of the 100 most influential leaders in the world right now. Uh, if you go to Inc. Magazine, he's he's in there. He's all over a bunch of stuff. Dan Rockwell is amazing. And he, to speak to him for about an hour, and he told me this incredible story. He said, Lyle, I'm not who I am because of something like amazing I did. What happened is the people around me confirmed what I was able to do. He told me, he said he was in a meeting and there was a young lady that walked up to him and said, why should I listen to anything that you have to say? He was taken aback by the statement. And as he leaned back, he saw some people looking in his direction as he's talking to this lady. And then he took a real good notice of how many people were looking at him. Mm -hmm. And he leaned in and he told her, ask them, ask all of them why you're here to listen to me. And he told me, he said, Lyle, what you need is social confirmation. You need other people around you while you talk about whatever it is that you want to do that will say that whatever it is that you're doing is viable. And so what I started, Kirsten, was a podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I started a podcast. The podcast is called Services Power. And the first thing I did was I got on the podcast, started to write a bunch of stuff. And I wrote the first 25 shows. I scripted them all. Because I wanted to be able to have something to say about being a servant leader. And I wanted to have some type of voice, some type of substance when it came to being a servant leader and then put that information out. And as I did that, I was going to invite people to that conversation. And I had no idea at the time, but there were tons of people that want to be invited to those kinds of conversations. As a matter of fact, I'm getting emails all over the place now, LinkedIn messages, messages on Twitter about getting on the talk about servant leadership, which is phenomenal. However, now I've got comments from people that say, hey, Lyle, thank you for the work that you're doing. Now, I've done a bunch of study. I've sat under the leadership and the teaching, the acumen of a lot of different phenomenal servant leaders across the world. However, I don't 
feel like I've done a whole lot of work. But what Dan Rockwell has said to me has actually already started to ring true in just over a year of starting at PAC Servant Leadership. It's because of all the other people, all the other voices that has allowed uh, allowed my voice to be amplified. And so it's given us opportunities. We've gone to Harvard Business School and spoken to their uh, public um, the public service symposium and spoke to public servants there at Harvard Business School about servant leadership. We've been down at American University. We've been over at Atlanta, Atlanta Leadership College. We have been kind of up and down the eastern seaboard. We just left Denver talking about servant leadership. We have been all over the place talking to people about the power to serve and how it could serve us all. We've been trying to do our best to coach people in the university space and businesses and even churches as well are really Mm -hmm. just kind of enamored about this message of serving others better, serving others well. And so the podcast has been massive. It's been huge. Um, Been able to even speak on some of the Air Force bases as well that I've been affiliated with. I actually just finished a talk down at Andrews. I'm actually going to do a a talk now here on Thursday at the base that I currently am stationed at here at Joint Base McGuire Dick Slakehurst. Excited about talking to about uh, 75 to 100 civilians that work in our GS system, in our government service system, about uh, serving leadership. Um, it's been exciting about significance and talking to them about how can they be more significant and how they can allow other people around them to be more significant. And that's what we're doing currently. We're looking for more opportunities. So if you're a listener and you <laughs> wanting to see something change in your leadership culture, uh, man, we would love to sit down, talk to you and help you out. Awesome. So tell me what are some of the, what's the biggest internal or external challenge that you've had to overcome and how did you overcome it? Honestly, selfishness. I mean, servant leadership about you. Now, I've been told on so many different occasions about how big my personality is. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this story. I, as a real young man, brand new, and married, uh, my first year of marriage, my wife and I, we left Germany, which is where I met her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she, she's European at heart. Uh, she grew up there in in Germany, uh, although she is American. And we moved to the island of Guam and I had just started doing some public speaking while I was in Germany. As a matter of fact, I got to travel to Africa, different parts of Africa, uh, from Uganda to uh, uh, to to Morocco, to Egypt, and, and you know, kind of places in between. Did you know that Egypt is actually a part of Africa? I didn't. I just thought <laughs> Egypt was Egypt. And I was like, oh, it's actually part of Africa. It's weird. Um, but but got, so so really young, got in this opportunity to do a lot of public speaking. And so my mindset when I went to this little itty bitty island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean called Guam, that I just thought, man, I'm just going to go out here. And I'm going to turn this whole entire island upside down. They ain't never seen somebody like me. And so as I got into being a part of the community there, talking to leaders there on the island, man, I got shut down, Kirsten. I got <laughs> shut down so, so hard. Mm-hmm. And it really just damaged me from an ego perspective. But I've always kind of had that. I always had these big dreams, these lofty goals. And so when I'm thinking about impact serving leadership and how many lives that we can touch and how many lives that have been impacted by the servanthood mindset and the everything that entails service, when we think about the industry, when we think about going to restaurants, when we think about going to the convenience store, when we even think about just going to our friend's house for Thanksgiving families and all of the service minded service hard things that we do on a consistent basis in our lives and how much service impacts every single person but a mindset of servant leadership doesn't get infused with the service that we render and provide i'm thinking oh my gosh 
every single person on the face of the planet, all what, nine billion people now? I don't know how many people are on Earth. <laughs> I don't Man, know. everybody can benefit from this. And so, man, Kirsten, internally, I'm thinking this massive dream, but also what's happening internally for me is this mindset that um, my eyes are really getting too big for my vision. It's like when you sit down in front of a meal and you're really, really super hungry, mm-hmm. um, but you've been you know, doing a lot of exercises and your stomach gets smaller. <laughs> and so your eyes has got way too big for your stomach. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden, it's just so much food on the plate. That's how it was with this vision. And so the same kind of thing that happened in Guam back in 2005, 2006 happened again when I started this company because I was still in the military, first of all. And I assumed, hey, all I got to do is go out and say, hey, listen, you know, I got this stuff, (laughs) you know, um, you know, uh, so let me do it. And and, And I got no, I got no a bunch of times. So you, you add the other part of the question is how did I overcome it? Yeah, I I love telling this part. This is my this is some of my favorite stuff. First of all, uh, for anyone listening to the podcast, if you've had any failure in your life, please embrace it. Embrace failure is the fertilizer that everything good in your life can grow out of. It's where you plant seeds for your success. You plant it in failure. You have to be willing to fail to truly succeed. John Maxwell, the number one leadership guru in the world, teaches and talks about all the time that failure is a fuel for you to continue to go forward. I love it. And there's this TED talk by a name by a guy by the name. I'm going to mess his name up, but I'm going to try. Zhao Zhang. <laughs> it, 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 but the TED talk is called 100 Days of Rejection. And it, you got if you've never seen this TED talk, it is fantastic. It's so good. The long story short is what this young man did is because he was so scared of being rejected, he actually made a program for himself for the next hundred days. He actually listed it out. He was going to do a hundred days worth of things that he knew would get himself rejected. So the very first thing is he went up to a security guard and he said, Hey, can I have a hundred dollars? And of course, the security guard said no. <laughs> but, so he's filming all of this, right? So he has like a body cam and he's filming all of it. And so as soon as the guy said no, he ran away. You know, Zhao Zhang ran away. But he didn't realize because he went back on the video and listened to it. He didn't realize that the guy asked him why. And so as, as he realized, he was like, well, hold on. I just missed an opportunity. And so I think one of the next ones, he goes to a a burger joint and he says, hey, can I have a burger refill? (laughs) And the guy says, a what? Yeah, a burger refill. He's like, oh, he's like, yeah, you know how you get a drink refill if I go over there? Just I I would like to refill my burger. And the guy was like, uh. I don't think we do that here. Mm-hmm. Let me go talk to the manager. <laughs> you know, but but it was it was this way that he began to embrace rejection that he would overcome it. So I watched this TED talk and I am so emboldened, Kirsten. I was so emboldened because I was getting rejected. I was getting opposition. I had my bubble popped and I didn't know what to do. Um stories that Zhao Zhang talks about is him on the on the campus of the University of Texas and he's going down the hall and he's knocking on professors doors and he's saying hey can I teach a class hey can I teach a class hey can I teach a class now one thing that he did say was I was prepared I was prepared to teach a class I didn't just say it because I you know just wanted to teach a class I was prepared I was ready to show them curriculum I was going to show them how I was able to teach it and what it would be to benefit them all those things I was prepared but I wanted to do something that no one would allow me to do. And so I took that example and I went to my career assistance advisor on the base that I was stationed at. And I said, ma'am, I would love to teach this class. I'd love to show it to you. And she looked up at me and she said, oh, we need somebody's help. Yes. (laughs) This worked. (laughs) And so that's the mentality I've had now for the last maybe nine months. And so and whether I'm on some other social media platform, I'm doing my research and I am fully prepared to go in and just take, uh, you know, bite down on my mouthpiece, so to speak, and say, hey, can I do this? And if a no comes, I'm going to ask a follow up question. Why? You know, or how, you know, just kind of lean into the person, and figure out what it is that they have going on in their space. But mm-hmm. I'm so ready to hear a yes. And so 
that's how I overcame my ego issue. That's how I overcame kind of the rejection of this vision. And that's kind of how we are where we are right now as far as a company that's getting ready to really grow as soon as I get out of the military uh, because there's some rules there. I can't do too much. (laughs) Well, and I have Uh, to say thank you for your service. I mean, my honor to serve. Yes. Thank you so much. Now, when, when will you get out? Um, I'm slated to retire on the 2nd of February, 2020. Okay. And so I am currently, if I'm not mistaken, as of the date of this recording, 256 days from retirement. Okay. Not that you're counting. No. <laughs> oh, no. You know, give or take. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're laying a very strong foundation um, in preparation for that time. I am which is smart. I don't have to tell you that, but that's good. No, so, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Cause you'll, uh, it sounds like you're going to have this like brewing momentum. Yeah, we're looking to do that. And I tell you what, preparation is so good for anybody who wants to truly make an impact. Uh, For those of you guys living to lead for impact, you have to be prepared for the impact. It has to impact us first, and then we've got to prepare to make that impact. And so um, that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to be on this podcast. It's kind of <laughs> dovetailing into my entire life and, of course, my business. And uh, Kirsten Ross is amazing, by the way, everybody. Oh. Uh, if, of course, if you're listening, you know. So. Ah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, you're amazing. So, um, you know, the next question I was going to ask, I feel like you have answered it, but maybe there's some other strategies underneath. Um, so how do you stay motivated and moving during tough times? So I know it sounds like you're just going for those no's with an expectation of yes, and you're you're prepared. You've done your research. You're prepared for whatever it is that you're asking to be able to do. But what other techniques, what other strategies do you use? Vision. Vision. That's probably the biggest one that uh, that I can give anyone. If you have a vision and you believe in it, you have to close your eyes and see the finish line before you start running. And if you believe that you're deserved, that you're supposed to be at that finish line, if you know that at the end of that finish line, whatever your impact is, is going to really uh, embolden anything that you've planned to do. When you close your eyes, you can see the prize being like that little kid that is dreaming about being someone or something great. When you close your eyes, you need to be able to see that. When you hear no, you need to close your eyes and you need to be able to see that. When you falter, when you fall down, when you're in your pain place and you close your eyes, you need to be able to see that finish line. You need to be able to see that vision of the end goal and get yourself up to get to that place because you're going to have a story, an amazing story of faltering and messing up in other places and having a vision towards going to that place. But I'll also add not only having a vision, but I'll also add a voice. And that voice can't be our voice. The the, the thing about millennials right now, millennials and Generation Z, is that the challenge that they have is that they've been on social media for so long, they see text and they see videos, but their conversation are is mostly in their own head. And so our own voices are the voices of rejections for these last two generations that have come up. And so what we need are external voices speaking to us to motivate us to get up out of our slothful place. Whatever is slowing us down, whatever is holding us back, whatever barrier is in front of us, we need some type of coach, some kind of mentor, some type of champion behind us with a voice that booms in our life that gets us to get up, see the vision, and continue to run forward. I think, Kirsten, for me, I've had some incredible voices behind me that believe in me that have said, Lyle, listen, you need to get up off your keister, buddy, and keep it moving because there are so many people who are hopeless that are not, that can't see themselves the way they truly are. And they need you to go serve them, to go tell them that they are significant, that there is something about them that is amazing, that there's something about them that is a gift to the rest of the world. And they need 
see it. They need you to pronounce it and then you to proclaim it in them so that they can go do it. And if you stay, if you stay where you're at, if you don't move, then it's never going to happen. So that's amazing. It sounds like you've gotten really good, like motivating input from others and they're encouraging you to do for others what they're doing for you. Like get out there and help people kind of around their blind spots, right? Keep them. Yes. Moving during their tough times. So, um, so last question is what words of wisdom, which you've shared so many already. Um, but what words of wisdom do you have for others who want to make their impact? I appreciate you allowing me to answer that question as well, Kirsten. I think that a lot of people will say, hey, don't give up and uh, those types of things. Uh, my advice is going to be a little bit different. Don't be afraid. Whatever fear thing is gripping you about whatever impact that you want to make, because whoever's listening to this, your impact should be way bigger than you. And it mm-hmm. should scare you. If, you're, if your vision does not scare you, it's way too small. I agree. Don't allow fear to paralyze you to the point where you can't make that impact. Don't allow whatever you're scared of to, to stop you for so long that you become stagnant and still. And that you crawl back into whatever safe place that you have and you never escape from that. No one that I know has ever made any kind of impact in the sphere of safety. We've all been a little bit vulnerable to make an incredible impact. People who have made an impact on me were always vulnerable with me and they were vulnerable because that whatever impact they needed to make in me exposed them. You're going to be exposed in some way, shape or form. And that is okay. The fear, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. The fear, I'm not going to, I'm not saying that it's not real. I'm saying that we need to embrace it and go through it because fear is a, it's a, it's a motivator and an indicator, really, it's more of an indicator that whatever, whatever impact we're going to make, it's bigger than us and it needs us to be made in the world. Don't allow fear to cripple you. Awesome. Yes, the big stuff doesn't happen from the comfort zone. <laughs> you got to get out of your comfort zone. What do they say? Like you're safe in the, you're safe in the harbor, but that's not where the action is. Like that's not where stuff's going to, exactly. you know, where you're going to make your difference. Or from your exactly. lazy boy or from your, <laughs> you got to get yourself. And that's that whole little amygdala, your little lizard brain is popping off. Like it wants us to stay on the beaten path, but that right. is not where our impact happens. So there's not really a way to shut that thing down because it, you know, it's part of us and it had a, it has a good purpose. It just doesn't totally fit in the world that we're in right now. Um, cause our life usually isn't da- in danger when we're going to go speak in front of a group or make a cold call or, you know, <laughs> exactly. uh, be vulnerable with others. Uh, so we're going to have that fear, but it's not the kind of fear that, that our amygdala would have us believe is going to happen. We're, our life isn't in danger. So, right. um, oh, well, thank you so much. I love, um, I always get really excited when people talk about busting fear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cause that is where, where life definitely happens, where the fun stuff happens. So I just want to thank you for, um, joining me today and all the words of wisdom that you've shared and the inspiration. Uh, you definitely, I think have given people just a small little window into how you can help them make their own impact. So if you want to learn more about Lyle, go to today's podcast show notes, Go to DefeatTheDrama.com, click on the podcast tab, and then go to episode 157. I'll have his website link there, which is serviceispower.org. And you can go check out his website, connect with him, uh, and possibly have him help you make your big impact. So thank you so much, Lyle, for joining me today. It's my honor, Kirsten. Oh, yeah, and Impact Servant Leadership, that website is now live as well. Oh, okay. I didn't have that one on here. Okay. Impact servant leadership.com. 
Yes. Okay. Well, I'll have um, Lyle is going to send that to me. Yes, you are, Lyle, correct? Yes, of course. <laughs> and then I'm going to, um, I will have that one on the show notes as well. So thank you so much, Lyle. I am so grateful again for your service and for the impact that you're out there making in this world and for this bubbling momentum that you're creating uh, that will be, you'll be ready to run uh, when you uh, leave your, your military service. And I want to encourage all of you to get out there and make your impact. The world needs you. So until next time, make it a great day. Mm-hmm.